Don't get me wrong, the Ukrainian military has a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. They're uh, officer cadre, I mean, they're officer class, um, never really, never really embraced the Western way of doing things. And you can, we, you know, the, again, Think Tank Land loved, loved this image of the Ukrainians adopting mission tactics. Oh my God, the Green Berets told them the shit the last 16 There's months. There's women like, fighting on the front Oh yeah, they yeah. like the resistance. Honestly, if you talk to 10th group guys, they're like, yeah, that, that's all bullshit. Um, and I can tell you it's bullshit. And interestingly enough, the mainstream Ukrainian army, still shackled by its Soviet origins, Interesting. kills mission command, kills small unit initiative. Every, every, every nationality has kind of general characteristics. Ukrainians have this, at times, it's almost an annoying, um, uh, what's, what's the word, uh, insubordination. Right. It's right. like, no, I can do this better. Blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. But um, the Ukrainians have a problem with lack of mission command, with too much of the Soviet mentality within the military, even within the special operations forces. They don't have a clear understanding of mission command. Um, the Estonian and Polish guys who worked with the Ukrainians longer and cl more and more closely than U.S. will say that's their biggest. They struggle with it. And a lot of the foreign uh soldiers who have come in the volunteers uh, zelensky's legion it was it, it was managed poorly they were sent to ukrainian units as casualty replacements to begin with you know it was just a bad setup um but but my point is too they have legitimate complaints about leadership they fell under you know i heard some horror stories um Zaporizhia, you know, was sitting in the lobby of a hotel. Jack, I may have already told you this story. Tell me to shut up if I have. But um, we, so we, yeah, in Zaporizhia, and uh, all these foreign guys come in, um, non-Ukrainians, Gringos, right? And they are. There's a few of them bandaged up. They look pretty beat up. Uh, and we start talking to them. You know, all good, good guys. Uh, uh, Americans, Brits from the main group. There was some. Finns, Scandinavians, and they had formed basically a company in the Azov, and they had been, over the previous four days, assigned uh, the same mission, executed the same way, attacking a village without fire support, um, and on the, you know, the very last time they found themselves out in the field under, in a field under Russian artillery fire, um, and they realized that their platoon commander just fucking doesn't have a clue, so mm -hmm. they walk, they're like, we're done. Mm -hmm. And they can do that, you know, the Ukrainians aren't going to go after them. And strategically, he is not failing as badly as we would like to think. Think about the countries of the world who are aligned or not aligned, or at least haven't condemned the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Over half. Yeah. Right? So, you know, we, we, we can stomp our feet and yell and scream, but it, it's almost as though Putin is very carefully excising the United States from the global. Well, and there are people who think that our whole strategy in Ukraine isn't to help Ukraine win. It's just to... Just bleed Russia. To bleed Prime. Russia. Yeah. And I have no problem with that. We can get all emotional about Ukraine, this and that. But Ukraine has a lot of fucking answers to Ukrainian you know, government, bureaucracy, military. Um, it's a corrupt, fucked up society. Mm -hmm. The let you know, so I'm not, I'm not a big f fan of uh, Ukraine. Eating Russia dry, but it's Ukrainian blood. Like it's yeah. there are there yeah. are actually people so, who are so, bleeding. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So if you are weird enough to think that human life is is equal regardless of nationality, a very extraordinary point of view. There are, and the and the Ukrainians are in violation of um, the Hague Convention. They, they, there is a, I forget the exact phraseology, but it is, we, we looked at this closely and it's, uh, yeah, they, they should be no filming of, uh, the, the phrase, the, the terminology is bringing attention, blah, 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 to media. Um, and yes, the Ukrainians are violating that, you know, I, absolutely, there's, they, and, and there are, they're filming of a number of things that they're doing with uh, uh, POWs is violating the law. We are, 
we as U.S. trainers absolutely will distance ourselves. As soon as anyone shows us a video of killing Russians, prisoners, we're like, okay, that you have just fucking disqualified you and your whole unit for us being a touch point. Yeah. And we've been showing those videos plenty of times. So yeah. my point is, um, they, it's a very, very dirty war, and the Ukrainians are committing plenty of violations of law and armed conflict, and we need to accept, not accept what they're doing, right? but call that out. Right. Um, but the way to do it, it isn't say, hey, guys, we can't give you any other training. Right. Javelin we have an, training, we uh, have an EO class I know, right javelin yeah. training, <laughs> but we're going to tell you, you can't, guys, Right. killing the Russian prisoners is... Right. And it's interesting because in the past, in, you know, you know, you like Latin America or whatever, if U.S. Uh, forces or employees were involved with any force that committed, you know, yeah. war atrocities or, right or whatever, back, right? you have to, yeah, yeah you're yeah. done. Yeah. But we're obviously not going to pull our support from Ukraine. Well, my point is, it's not about Ukraine. We're not like... I happen to have, you know, Ukraine flag tied to my bag, but I'm not, oh, my God, Ukraine's so awesome. No, because it's, I understand that there are plenty of fucked up people running Ukraine. It's not about that. It's about global norms, right? Right, right.